bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, although it is still Advent, fourth Sunday of Advent today, I'm going to say to you, Merry Christmas, because I have a Christmas present for you today. I'm going to preach a shorter than usual sermon. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm doing that because I know all of you are coming back on Wednesday, and I need to save something to say to you on Christmas Eve, right? <laughs> but first, we have some pretty awesome scripture readings to deal with today, don't we? St. Paul writing at the end of the, his letter to the church in Rome is, is something I've really struggled with this week. Those at the Panera uh, Coffee Bible Study are aware of that. Some of these words have disturbed me greatly. So I am sorry to tell you that once again I am preaching to myself and you just have to listen for a few minutes. Because Paul reminds us of this uh, incredible phrase, the obedience of faith. And then the Blessed Virgin Mary teaches us with an extreme example of just that. And I'm standing here today confessing to you my own struggle with Paul's words, with that obedience of faith stuff. You know, I thought I had it all planned out. <laughs> Knew where I was going to go, what church I was going to serve, where we we're going to live, what grocery store we would use. But God continues to shift lanes on me and my very well thought out and carefully prepared plan for my life and my ministry as I search for what is next for me. And in the midst of that frustration and fear come these readings, and they bring some emotions out of me. I am both in awe and in shame of these readings. I'm in awe of Mary, in shame of my own failure to be willing to obey in faith and to live into what the possibilities of what that could actually mean. The temptation for all of us today is to just kind of play it off. You know, this is just some Bible story, right? Or perhaps to underestimate what it took or what it takes. Or to simply say, well, that was nice. Mary did it. She said yes. She obeyed. I can do that too, right? It's really easy. But is it really that way for us? Is it that easy for us? And to get there, I don't think we can skip too quickly to our conclusions. We need to look at this example that's given to us. We need to stop and pay honor and homage to the Theotokos. The God-bearer is a Greek word for Mary, her title. To pay attention to what she has done, the reality of what she has been asked to do. For while it is oh so every bit 100% true that God also calls every one of us, and we have a choice to make in that, to obey in faith or to hide. <laughs> that is true for each of us, but our calling is different than Mary's. There has only been and will forever only be one God-bearer, one Theotokos, one mother of God, one who, in Barbara Brown Taylor's words, agrees to smuggle God into the world. <laughs> I love that image, don't you? Smuggling God as a baby into the world in this in this little stable, in this village, far from the bright lights and the thrones of power comes the God-bearer, the God-smuggler, Mary. Let us not leave the awesomeness of her choice too quickly. You heard the account in today's gospel reading, and I know you're probably quite familiar with it. Gabriel comes, the chief amongst God's heavenly messengers, and he greets this smuggler-to-be by calling her favored one. Now, the Greek here is a little ambiguous, although it would ruin a lot of our hymns. It's probably better translated grace-filled one, one full of grace, one with grace, or one who soon will give birth to grace. Interesting use of words there, Gabe. <laughs> Greetings, favored one. And I love this next part. The scripture says that Mary is perplexed by the greeting. <laughs> by the greeting? Really? Really? That's what she's perplexed by. There's an angel standing in front of her, and she's confused over what he called her. <laughs> How does she even hear what he had to say to her, you know, much less to be perplexed over these use of words, but that's what she did, and she's puzzled. 
why is this heavenly being calling me favored, graced? And why does he say to me that God is with me? And does he see me shaking, <laughs> quivering from head to toe? Well, yes, he does. For Gabriel's next words are those standard angel words, do not be afraid, <laughs> as if, right? <laughs> this is important to note. Mary is afraid. But is she the only one? Frederick Beekner, who is a wonderful pastor and author in his book, Peculiar Treasures, describes the scene this way. She struck the angel Gabriel as hardly old enough to have a child at all, let alone this child. But he'd been entrusted with a message to give her, and he gave it. He told her what the child was to be named and who he was to be and something about the mystery that was to come upon her. You mustn't be afraid, Mary, he said. And as he said it, he only hoped that she would not notice that beneath the great golden wings, he himself was trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hung now on the answer of a girl. We need to grasp the enormity of Mary's obedience before we try to use it as an example for our own lives. The whole future of creation hung upon the answer of this girl. We know her answer, of course. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here am I. Let it be. That's what she says. And nothing has ever been the same in our world since. This young woman teaches us about obedience of faith, of course, she only asks one question of Gabriel. Did you notice that? She asked, well, how will this work? <laughs> she didn't argue. She didn't try to hide. She didn't beg off. Think of how many of the giants of our faith have gone before Mary. Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, Gideon, Jeremiah, all guys, of course. <laughs> These great legends of our faith, and each one of them tried to get off the hook, didn't they? Abraham went and hid in Egypt for a while. Moses came up with all kinds of excuses. I stammer. I'm not worthy. Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips. Gideon claimed he was too unimportant. Jeremiah says, I'm too young. But Mary says, how? And yet, it's amazing. She is, after all, the Theotokos. These others, though, have things to teach us too, I believe. For they did eventually also say yes. And they too eventually learned what Gabriel says to this smuggler to be Nothing is impossible with God. God loved us enough to create us with free will, so we are free to make these choices, to run and hide, to make excuses, to not believe, to face the impossible and simply shrug and walk away, or to face the impossible and remember that nothing is impossible with God who waits patiently on each of us to answer the question, will you? It doesn't matter if you've given excuses before. It doesn't matter at all. It does not matter if you spent your life running from God's call. It does not matter if you are convinced that you are not good enough, not worthy enough, not talented enough, not brave enough. Or it doesn't matter if you think you have a better plan, <laughs> as I continue to preach to myself today. Mary was afraid. Don't forget that part. Gabriel says so. So am I. And maybe you are too. But that's part of the lesson for us today, that it is okay to be afraid of uncertainty. The story teaches us exactly that. Mary was afraid, yet she trusted the one thing that she had to hold on to. Nothing is impossible with God. Now, my friends, we all have a calling and we all have work to do for the kingdom and we may be afraid to say yes to God but that's not a disqualification it wasn't even for the God bearer so let us not today forget this amazing example of our lady because of her yes grace has come into the world because of her we have this wonderful example of calling and answering my hope for you is that you will believe 
as Mary did and have that obedience of faith, that you will trust as Mary did and answer as Mary did. And I hope I will also, that I too can have the obedience of faith. Sisters and brothers, may you and I, in our own fear and trembling, swallow hard and stand up straight and say to our Lord and God, here am I. Let it be according to your word. Amen.